Hi, I'm Professor Graham Yorston. Welcome to 5-Minute Mental Health Disorders. In this episode, I'll be talking about aphasia, prompted by the news that Bruce Willis is stepping back from acting after being diagnosed with this condition. Aphasia is an impairment of the understanding or expression of language due to damage to specific brain regions. It is usually a symptom or sign of another disorder. It can come on suddenly after a stroke or traumatic brain injury, but it can also occur as a result of a brain tumour, a brain infection or autoimmune condition. When it develops gradually over months or years, it may be a symptom of Alzheimer's disease or other type of dementia in which the typical issues of memory impairment are prominent. But there is a group of neurodegenerative disorders in which the gradual loss of speech and language is the main symptom. This is known as primary progressive aphasia. I've had no clinical involvement with Bruce Willis, but from the information in the press releases, it seems most likely to me that he has this progressive form of aphasia. Aphasia after traumatic brain injury is described in an Egyptian papyrus dating back to 1600 BCE. It is also described in ancient Indian, Greek and Roman medical texts, but it is the pioneering work of Paul Broca and Karl Wernicke in the 19th century that is remembered in the brain regions named after them. We now know there are multiple brain areas involved in producing and understanding speech and the written word. Damage to any of these areas or their connecting pathways can lead to language difficulties, so many different types of aphasia have been described. Primary progressive aphasia is a type of dementia in which language is heavily affected. It usually starts at a slightly younger age than Alzheimer's in the 50s or 60s. It was first described as a distinct syndrome in 1982 and is divided into three main types. Semantic dementia, progressive non-fluent aphasia and logopenic aphasia. But the clinical features and pathology of these overlap and there are cases that don't quite fit. So it's possible that all the variants exist on a spectrum rather than as distinct entities. Usually the first problem people with PPA notice is difficulty finding the right word or remembering names. Their problems gradually get worse and can include speech becoming hesitant, making mistakes with the sounds of words, making grammatical mistakes, speech becoming slow with short, simple sentences, forgetting the meaning of complicated words and later even simple ones, making it difficult for them to understand other people, speech becoming vague and the person having difficulty being specific or clarifying what they're saying, becoming less likely to join in or start conversations. Later in the illness, people may also develop other symptoms, including changes in personality and behavior, apathy or inertia, disinhibition, loss of the ability to empathize, repetitive and perseverative behaviors, hyperorality, and difficulties with memory and thinking, similar to Alzheimer's disease or difficulties with movement, similar to Parkinson's disease. Aphasia due to stroke is very common, but primary progressive aphasia is very rare. The pathology is complex. Some of the variants have the same brain changes as frontotemporal dementia, but logopenic PPA is closer to Alzheimer's in pathology. As primary progressive aphasia is rare and not all doctors are familiar with it, diagnosis may be delayed. Brain imaging with a CT, MRI or PET scan alongside a detailed cognitive assessment and a speech and language assessment are needed to differentiate it from other types of dementia and to clarify the subtype. There are currently no disease modifying treatments for PPA. Speech therapy may be helpful in maximizing communication for as long as possible but it does not slow down the rate of progression of the disorder. There have been some small studies using non-invasive brain stimulation techniques such as transcranial direct current stimulation and transcranial magnetic stimulation in combination with language therapy which have led to improvements in naming ability. People with aphasia after a stroke or brain injury usually improve over time but those with PPA slowly lose the ability to speak, write, read and understand language. Eventually, almost every patient becomes mute and unable to comprehend written and spoken language. Some studies have suggested that primary progressive aphasia may progress slightly faster than Alzheimer's disease, but there are differences between the subtypes. Thank you for watching this five minute video on aphasia. 
As always, I'd love to hear any comments you may have, and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to be kept up to date with the latest videos. See you next time.